Okay, this is part three of our lesson on archaic humans. We have just looked at some specimens of archaic humans, uh, some of them also called Homo hadrogensis, uh, especially the ones in um, Africa and Europe. Let's look at, um, in addition to noting their physical features, their differences um, in the cranial features from anatomically modern humans and from the Homo erectus species that came before, there were different cultural changes happening as well, and that's what we're going to look at in this segment. During the later Middle Pleistocene, archaic humans in Africa and Europe invented the Levawa technique, which may reflect their increased cognitive abilities relative to Homo erectus. So this was just a more complex toolkit. Uh, earlier we learned about Oldowan and Acheulean. Also, archaic humans increased their use of cave sites. There is some evidence for the controlled use of fire, and there's also evidence for temporary shelters being built. Sites in China contain evidence of human-controlled fire, yet the best documented evidence has recently be found, been found in South Africa. And you can see an image of the Lavawa technique here. Okay, so food sources were numerous. Uh, resources such as fruits, vegetables, and bird eggs were utilized for food, as was fish. Recent finds give clues to hunting capabilities. Three six-foot-long wooden spears dating to around 400,000 years ago were found at the site of, I'm not going to pronounce that correctly, but Shonijin. It is argued that these are throwing spears that were used for hunting large animals. Here we have a little timeline, and we're wondering, how did we get to anatomically modern humans? We're looking at these uh, species and um, where they were in China, Europe, and Africa. Here are some uh, comparisons between archaic Homo sapiens and the earliest modern Homo sapiens. You can see the large forehead and uh, larger rounder cranium of the modern Homo sapiens and the smaller tooth sizes and larger cranial capacity. Okay, the stars of our show are kind of like Homo erectus was the star last in the last lesson and Neanderthals are our big topic for this um, segment of the lesson and they kind of represent an interesting blip really they didn't last very long or you know as a species uh, and it's argued that really they were just as human as anatomically modern humans so that's a question you can ask yourself or notes you can take how human were neanderthals and that's what we're going to look at here okay so we are in the middle place to see at 780,000 years ago but um by 120,000 years ago, at the beginning of the later Pleistocene, uh, Homo, uh, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis had already emerged. So probably around 130,000 years ago, I believe, as the earliest specimen of Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. So we're at the end of the Middle Pleistocene, basically. As documented by the fossil remains, as well as artificial evidence or artifactual evidence from archaeological sites, the long period of transitional hominins in Europe continued well into the late Pleistocene. But with the appearance and expansion of the Neanderthals, the evolution of archaic humans took a turn. In Western Asia and Europe, later archaic Homo sapiens evolved Neanderthal characteristics. A wide nasal aperture or nasal, nasal opening, small round eye orbits, a wide space between the eye orbits, and mid-facial projection, also called puffy maxilla. Kind of a Homer Simpson look is what uh, it can be described as. The most recent evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early modern humans suggests that complete speciation was never attained. So like I'm saying, uh, Neanderthals were more of a cousin, a related cousin, to anatomically modern humans, um, and uh, Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans were later able to interbreed. Um, not necessarily very successfully. There might have been some fertility issues when these mixing uh, when this mixing occurred, 
but this means that gene flow never ended between Homo sapiens neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens sapiens. Therefore, these two groups are different subspecies of Homo sapiens, not entirely separate species. And you'll learn a little bit more about that in this week's video. Neanderthal remains are as old as 130,000 years, and their evolutionary roots state back to around 400,000 years ago in Western Europe. But we usually think of Neanderthals as living during the last glaciation, starting at 75,000 years ago. So these are all potential uh, ranges you can put Neanderthals in. The most common range would be that they lived between 130 and 30,000 years ago. Specimens from Western Europe are often called classic Neanderthals because they tend to be more robust than the rest of the Neanderthal sample. Neanderthals had large brains around 1,500 uh, cubic centimeters that may be partially explained by their large body size and need for metabolic efficiency in colder climates. So it's argued that Neanderthal features, especially their facial features and their stocky bodies, are cold adaptations. So they, they were you know, ice age mammals and they may have had adaptations to the cold for living you know, in Europe during the Ice Age. The Neanderthal cranium is large, long, and low with an occipital bun. The forehead is more vertical than in, in Homo erectus. The brow ridges are arched rather than straight, and the face projects distinctly forward.